World of Warcraft is one of the largest games ever made and has been expanding since its release in late 2006. It is what is known as an MMORPG, or a massive multiplayer online role-playing game. Now I know that's quite the mouthful. In this amazing and detailed world that Blizzard has created, there are many different races, factions, and cultures. Today we're going to examine a group of orcs known as the Blackrock Clan. We'll look at their culture, tradition, and history to see how it shapes their beliefs and social norms. The Blackrock Clan is a prominent orcish clan that originally hails from the caverns of Gorgorond. On Draenor, they were known for their strict military discipline and skills in mining and blacksmithing. A great foundry served as their ancestral home, wherein master smiths smelted and worked with the impossibly hard black rock ore that gave the clan their name. The black rocks were known for their strict military discipline and extremely regimented society. On Draenor, the clan studied the earth around them, developing their knowledge of metallurgy and smelting. Once they learned the secrets of their unique black rock ore, that was scattered throughout the region, the orcs were able to create astonishing tools and weapons. Black rock blades were soon coveted for their reliability and durability. The black rock clan originally used the naturally occurring elemental fused infernos of ancient Draenor to shape and harden their namesake's ore. A shaman could use these bellows to channel the power of a fire spirit directly into the blast furnace, allowing the black rock to set up forges almost anywhere. By the time immediately preceding the creation of the Old Horde, the Black Rocks boasted the largest, most organized, and best equipped Orcus military in the world. The clan shaman had perfected the art of using the elemental's fire to shape the Black Rock ore, and the clan had the most advanced weapon foundries among all the Orcs of Draenor. The Black Rocks worked their forges all day and night, crafting enchanted weaponry and armor that was nearly indestructible. Understanding the relationship this clan has with the earth, metalworking, and military might helps us see why they would approach organizational communication from a classical theory. The leadership of the clan would view their workers more as cogs in their great war machine than as orcs. There would be little concern for how an employee feels or if he's finding satisfaction in his work. A large portion of their lowest labor is actually performed by slaves that were captured from other clans. Now that we know that the production of weapons and war machines have been the driving factor of this clan for hundreds of years, it's safe to assume that the HR department, well, in this case, I guess the OR department, Orcus Relations, isn't the largest focus of the Blackrock clan. Cromog actually was put in charge of employee relations about 200 years ago and boasts a 100% employee satisfaction rate. Granted, the few orcs who have been brave enough to go in and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with him haven't been ever heard or seen from again. Let's look at the life of a flame master shaman. Day in and day out, you can find Gary enchanting blades with his elemental strength. He's only been with Blackrock Productions for about five months, but he's starting to slip. Often he finds himself dreaming of simpler times when he worked for the goblins of Tenaris where he felt like he was really making a difference in the world. If things keep up at this rate, Gary may end up missing a blade or two here and there, and then have to sit down with Cromog. If Gary's manager would get to know him, he'd find out that Gary has a great desire to be a graphic designer, and could really improve the look and feel of the swords that the factory produces. But because of classical theory, there is a belief that there is only one right way to do things, so Gary will be stuck doing the same thing until he either quits or is fired. Another employee suffering under the defects of classical theory is Stephen. Stephen came to Blackrock Industries with high hopes of becoming a Beastmaster. He's had a deep love of animals his entire life. When he was a boy, he grew up tending to his father's cleft hoof herd. Every morning, he'd be the first person out among the cows. He'd always felt a deep connection to animals and figured that he'd find a job in shipping. Stephen even had some experience with supply chain management and could have been invaluable if his hiring manager had simply conducted their quarterly reviews. One thing Stephen has noticed in the short time he's been at Blackrock is how the handling of animals isn't always humane, which leads to injuries and late shipments. He wants to bring up this issue to his department head, but there isn't any system in place where an employee can offer suggestions to upper management 
without fear of repercussions. Because the focus of classical theory is so much set on closely supervised workers and using reward and punishment as a motivation, most BlackRock employees find it difficult to get outside their comfort zones due to the fear of punishment. The enforcers of these reward systems have been calloused over the years, find it hard to even view their fellow orcs as individuals. They're so used to dishing out pain when someone is slacking that they've been given the affectionate nickname of Iron Tax Masters, or Iron Bums if no one is around. In most classical organization structures, there's little room for advancement. For example, an iron journeyman who works the anvils around the forges usually stays a journeyman until someone above him retires. Air quotes implied, um, aka he dies. Classical organizational theory evolved during the first half of the 20th century. It represents the merger of scientific management, bureaucratic theory, and administrative theory. Frederick Taylor is considered the father of this uh, particular theory, and it's often referred to as Taylorism. Now, classical theory is the traditional theory wherein more emphasis is on the organization rather than on the employees working therein. According to classical theory, the organization is considered as part of a machine and the human beings as different components or parts of that machine. Now, classical theory has the following characteristics. It is built on an accounting model. It lays emphasis on detecting errors and correcting them once they have been committed. It is more concerned with the amount of output than the human beings inside. The human beings are considered to be relatively homogenous and unmodifiable, thus labor is not divided on a basis of different kinds of jobs uh, to be preferred in an organization. It assumes that employees are relatively stable in terms of change in an organization, and it assumes that the authority and control should be vested with a central authority only in order to have a centralized and integrated system. Now, some writers of classical theory emphasize on technological aspects of an organization and how the individuals can be made more efficient, while others emphasize on structural aspects of an organization so that individuals collectively can be made more efficient. Now, initially, Trailer was actually very successful at improving production. His methods involved getting the best equipment and people and then carefully scrutinizing each component of this production process by analyzing each task individually, Taylor was able to find the right combination of factors that yielded the largest increase in production. Well, Taylor's scientific management theory proved successful in simple industrialized companies at the turn of the century is not really fared well in modern companies. The philosophy of production first and people second has left a large legacy of declining production and quality, dissatisfaction with work, and loss of pride in workmanship, and a near-complete loss of organizational pride. With a changing economical and social landscape, the BlackRock clan is at a crossroads. If they don't make some big changes in their company's culture and structure, it is likely that the Dark Iron Dwarves will surpass them in both quality and production very similar to what happened to the American auto industry not too many years ago. If you are an outside consultant, what changes would you suggest to upper management of the BlackRock clan? If I personally was hired, the first thing I'd offer would be to adapt a more humanistic management style. If management is more in touch with the average employee, they will be more apt to see potential and hire from within. The second thing I would change would be the role of the taskmasters. They would be in charge of quality assurance, but in a very different way. We'd send them to a quality assurance class or seminar that would focus on helping them develop the potential in workers. They would learn positive reinforcement techniques, team building and exercises, and conflict management skills. When there are any cultural changes taking place in an organization, there's almost always some people who will resist. I see Cromog being a potential stumbling block for the progress of the HR system, and I would suggest relocating him to maybe either the mining or the shipping department. He could be in charge of loading the boats with the finished product, seeing as how he could easily lift thousands of pounds of swords with one hand. These are just some general ideas that I would suggest to the leadership of the clan. One of the last suggestions I'd give to the clan would be to run a PR campaign, one that highlights the changes that they're making in the organization. 
putting the spotlight back onto the craftsmen that have made their products such a sought after commodity throughout the entire world. Each month I'd run employee profiles talking about the Garys and the Stevens of the company. With these simple changes, BlackRock would be able to maintain its hold over the Azeroth market, the planet that World of Warcraft takes place on. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this journey through the BlackRock Foundry and understanding how their culture and their business practices have greatly influenced how their organization functions. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great night.